with an amazing advance in technology. Let's go live. I'm going to patch you right in to the Alaska Chinese Summit with the U.S. State Department. Here we go. You want to hear my impersonation of American? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Hey, I really, really want that. That looks good. <laughs> hey, 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 let me try. Let me try. I'll use my credit card. <laughs> do, do, do you have any non-dairy creamer? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Y'all come back now, yeah? <laughs> Just kidding. That was a clip from South Park with the Chinese mocking Americans. That's exactly how I felt watching the disastrous State Department meeting where it was held in Alaska with the chai -coms. Let's get right into it. Here we go. <laughs> Welcome back to the Nino G Show. Very thankful that you're here. Stopping tyranny or at least trying to exploit it. You know, I'm very disappointed in what I saw with the U.S. State Department meeting the chai -coms over in Alaska. The meeting was roughly like a, an hour and 15 minutes that they aired. The chai -coms commanded it for about 57 minutes, lambasting the American people and the American government. With a strong response from our State Department for around 11 or 12 minutes. I got a couple clips here that I'm going to show you. We're going to respond to them. I think both of us are going to agree it was, it was a sad display of uh, foreign foreign diplomacy. Today on the show, we have a packed segment. I have various audio clips. I'm going to create a little media montage here. And I'm going to show you the disrespect that the chai -coms showed us and our State Department just sitting there and taking it on the chin like we deserve that. Let's get right into it. First up, I want to show you exactly how... We're going to see a lot of manipulation here from the chai -coms. We're going to understand how crafty they are. But we're also going to see the fact that they are, they are echoing the same talking points that the left in this, and our media are echoing throughout our country. The scary thing is the parallel between those two is they are the same talking points, but who is getting what from who? Is it the American left taking, taking tips from the Chinese Communist Party, or is it the Chinese Communist Party now taking tips from the American left and the radical hostile takeover that's being ensued upon us. Which one is it? I'll let you decide. So we believe that it is important for the United States to change its own image and to stop advancing its own democracy in the rest of the world. Many people within the United States actually have little confidence in the democracy of the United States, and they have various views regarding the government of the United States. In China, according to opinion polls, the leaders of China have the wide support of the Chinese people. Yeah, let's stop right there. The American people don't have faith in, and, and first off, they're peddling, again, the less talking points. We are not a democracy here. We are a constitutional republic. The American people don't have faith in our constitutional republic. We don't have faith in our elected officials right now because they are running amok of us. The party of unity is actually the party of division. The minute majority is controlling a lot of things and ramming a lot of tyranny down the throats of the American people. The chai -coms now, the master manipulators, the intellectual property thieves, the polluters of the world, are now talking using the talking points of the left, and they're saying, a recent poll in the Chinese Communist Party, a recent poll. Uh, a communist are telling us about a poll of the people. You mean, uh, they should have told us the 100%, like with Russia, with Vladimir Putin getting elected with 100% of the vote always. The chai -coms are at it again with the manipulation of thoughts, the manipulation of facts, and now they're trying to use the same talking points of how the American media likes to use polls for their disinformation campaigns. Human rights. We hope that the United States will do better on human rights. China has made steady progress in human rights. And the fact is that there are many problems within the United States regarding human rights, which is admitted by the U.S. itself as well. The United States has also said that countries can't rely on force in today's world to resolve the challenges we face. And it is a failure to use various means to topple the so-called authoritarian states. 
And the challenges facing the United States in human rights are deep-seated. They did not just emerge over the past four years, such as Black Lives Matter. It did not come up only recently. So we do hope that for our two countries, it's important that we manage our respective affairs well. Can't oh. even foreshadow it. There was still no response from the State Department while the Chicoms were peddling the left's talking points. The Chicoms bring up BLM, which the founder of BLM comes out and says uh, she is a renowned Marxist. Oh, hey, turn that off right now. Now, before I set off that insensitivity alarm, the only reason I say that inflammatory comment is because that co-founder, Patrice Colors or whatever her name is, she was saying that her other... Why don't you just listen? I actually do have an ideological frame. Um, myself and Alicia in particular are trained organizers. Um, we uh, are trained Marxists. Oh! Let's go. Not only are they peddling the BLM lie, pretending like, uh, okay, Black Lives Matter brings a different uh, idea into U.S. Uh, government or U.S. relations, but there's no genocide going on within that. There's no systematic systematic racism keeping Oprah Winfrey down or the fact that we had eight years of uh, Barack Hussein Obama. America is a largely diverse and wonderful country. One thing I wish the State Department would have done in defense of the the media lies that the chicoms are spewing to us is they should have said oh yes uh, chinese government we thank you for your response let's speak a little bit about uh, human rights violations in america hmm the the largest one that we ever had was slavery and it took us once once the republicans dismantled the whole aspect of of slavery it took our country a little over a hundred years to not only preserve the union, which was for the, the greater good of society with the constitutional republic outlook, but also we fought a civil war based on to end slavery. The only country on the history of the earth that has ever done that. The people, the American people are the most righteous and morally correct people on earth. Okay, I'm going to say the American people with regards to how our government runs, how our constitutional republic was set up with our inalienable rights. So it took us a little over a hundred odd years to fix something that was terrible. Now we weren't committing genocide. We were enslaving people. The Chai comms, you have been a civilization for thousands of years for millennia. And yet you're, st you have active concentration camps holding Muslims, the Uyghurs that you're killing by the thousands. You have a thousand odd years that you haven't fixed anything with your country. You have the audacity to say anything about the United States of America. Go on with your talking points. What the Chinese communist government are peddling right now is the same exact stuff that the left is peddling. The BLM media lie. The founder is a said Marxist. You know, we found a problem in our country in over a hundred odd years. We ended slavery, but we also fought a civil war to end slavery. The only country on earth that has ever done that. The American people fought a civil war basis to end slavery and preserve the union. The Chai Coms have been around for thousands of years and have still not addressed their genocide, their communistic regime that is enslaving and disenfranchising their whole entire country. I wish I would have saw the U.S. government come back with this, but you're not going to see that because this State Department is something of, of the past uh, with the Obama administration and the years of apologizing. Let's continue to see what the master manipulators have to say. The ma overwhelming majority of American businesses in China have said that China's business environment is good, and nobody has forced them to stay in China. They see a profit coming from their presence in China, and they see immense opportunities in China. That's why they are here in China. Uh, let me interject real quick. Yeah, that is true. Uh, the communist government, I want you to, to really focus on their language here. So it sounded real good, right? The Chinese communist government is not forcing American companies to be there. You're absolutely right, and the big corporations and these American companies should actually be ashamed of themselves for being over there in Chinese communist country. But the reason why they're there is because taxes and regulations are so high on these corporations here in our own country that they're forcing them to go over there where there's no environmental regulations, there's no bureaucratic red tape, there's ample amounts of slave labor, big profits, and might I add, there is no unions. 
The Chicoms are very crafty. The Chinese government loves having American corporations over there because they are the champions of reverse engineering. Speaking of champions, let's hear what's next. On cyber attacks, let me say that whether it's the ability to launch cyber attacks or the technologies that could be deployed, the United States is the champion in this regard. Oh, no. Uh, oh, no. Oh, no. The master manipulators, the reverse engineers, the thieves of the world, the polluters, the Chinese communist government accusing us, the Americans, the American government, as the champions of cyber attacks. I don't believe this one bit. I'm getting too emotionally charged. Let's take a break. This one goes out to the goat. The Chinese Communist Party just set off the insensitivity alarm, but this time it's my insensitivity alarm. They set it off because, yeah, maybe we have the means to do that. We don't do that. We are a righteous people. I've served my country. I understand what we do. We fight our enemies. We don't commit cyber attacks on the Chinese people. We don't commit act of war on sovereign citizens. The reason why I'm so fired up is because I and many others have been victims of the Chinese Communist Party. And if you don't believe me, take a look at this. An ABC News article published July 9th, 2015. 22 million affected by OPM hack, officials say. OPM is the Office of Personnel Management. The U.S. agency blur burglarized by suspected Chinese hackers has completed its long-awaited damage assessment on more than 22 million people inside and outside of government likely had their personal information stolen, officials announced today. That number is more than five times larger than what the Office of Personnel Management announced a month ago when first acknowledging a major breach had occurred. At the time, OPM only disclosed that the personal records of 4.2 million current and former federal employees have been compromised. That was a Chinese attack on people, former federal employees and um, active military and active federal employees. Now, I'm not going to say that they take all fault, fault for that because in war they attack other governments and we were government personnel. But the problem is, is it's still shady because why are they stealing personal information of us? That is just completely wrong. But I could go on for days pointing out the hypocrisy of the chai comms right now and how they attack us, they attack our American citizens, and they step on the sovereignty of the American citizens every day. Check this out. A recent NPR, uh, this was last year, an NPR, which is, might I add, is a leftist publication. It's our national public radio. It is our state-run media. They aired this. Chinese hackers charged an alleged cyber theft of 145 million Americans' data. This was due to the Equifax one. The Justice Department announced charges Monday against four members of the Chinese military for allegedly hacking the credit bureau Equifax in 2017 and stealing their personal information around 145 million Americans. Oh my goodness. That is nearly almost half of Americans they stole. Private citizens, free citizens... Sovereign citizens. We are the champions of cyber attack. Who are you lying to? And yet our State Department sits on the other side and takes it. Takes it right to the chin. I want to go into one more clip from this egregious display from the Chinese Communist Party. But I do want you to focus on the language that the Chinese Communist government is about to say on our final clip before we see the strong defense of the United States State Department. You will see Chinese Representative Tu finishing his lashing, and then the Chinese interpreter about to drop some Chinese knowledge. Secretary Blinken, NSA Sullivan, you have been involved in the relationship with China for many years, so you're also true friends for the Chinese people. And uh, I would say that uh, I am uh, pleased to meet you today. And uh, uh, China, the Chinese delegation, is here at the invitation of the United States. Alarming! You heard it. 
These are all recycled individuals of the Obama administration. They're back up on the world stage because they need to now get buddy-buddy with the chai comms again. They are true friends of the Chinese Communist Party. Oh, man. Oh, man. The chai delegation just finished their 57-minute lambasting of the American government and also the American people. Now we are going to hear the strong-willed and deep big-chested response from the United States State Department with Anthony Blinken. Get ready for the defense of the nation by our State Department and our purple-headed translator. Anthony, please go ahead. Mr. Director, uh, State Counselor, um, given your extended remarks, permit me please to add uh, just a few of my own before we get down to... Oh, man, I gave them more benefit of the doubt than I should have. Our own State Department, oh my goodness, just asked the Chinese Communist government to permit me, please, to defend our nation on our own American soil. Oh my. So far, so not good, Anthony Blinken. You better give us something better than that, please. Mr. Sullivan may have a few things to say as well. Um, I have to tell you, in my, my short time as Secretary of State, I've spoken to, I think, nearly 100 counterparts uh, from around the world. And I just made uh, my first trip, uh, as I noted, to uh, Japan and South Korea. Uh, I have to tell you, what I'm hearing is very different from what you described. Uh, I'm hearing deep satisfaction that the United States is back, that we're reengaged with our allies and partners. I'm also hearing deep concern. Okay, hey, uh, deep concern too. I just want to reflect on this, what, what we just heard there. There's two takeaways to this. Either one, all the delegations from across the world are saying, yes, America is back. Now, they're either saying America's back now because we have an apologetic State Department coming out of the, the United States of America that is going to allow the same failed negotiations of trade agreements or ripping off the American people in the name of trade because the Obama administration here is a bunch of uh, spineless jellyfish. Or you could take his word saying that, most delegations around the world saying America's back because we had a Secretary of State prior that got America back, that made sure the world was not was actually paying for what America was paying for for the past two generations of saving the, the whole entire world from evil. And there's one more uh, hallmark uh, of our leadership uh, here at home, and that's uh, a constant quest to, as we say, uh, form a more perfect union. And that quest, by definition, acknowledges our imperfections, acknowledges that we're not perfect, uh, we make mistakes, uh, we, uh, we have reversals, we take steps back. That's enough of you. Yeah, we are not perfect, but we are damn near close to it. America saved the world multiple times over and over again. We are the world police. It's about time that are, we stick to the values of the national interests of the United States, but also for the greater good of humanity through the eyes of republicanism, small r. <sighs> very disappointed in our State Department, very disappointed in this sham show that was perpetrated on us by the Chinese Communist government. Well, that wraps up the Alaska chai Summit. I'll let you guys take what you get from that. But to me, I was genuinely disappointed from our representation from our government, and I was absolutely appalled that the chai were saying all of those egregious things about us, about the American people, and the American government. We are a force for good. Our government is being radicalized by the same people that have been trying to destruct it since the beginning. Please stand up for liberty. Don't be afraid to challenge the narrative. I'm very thankful you guys are here. It's time to stand up and do something, whether it's at your PTA meetings, whether it's at your ballpark, wherever it is, stand up for liberty. Stand up against tyranny and be the best American you guys can be. Love your neighbor. Thanks a lot. I'll catch you guys on the next one.